you have a Canon R6 Mark II or any Canon camera that does C-Log3 and you want to grade it, well, we're going to do that today with DaVinci Resolve. So sit back, relax, and this is going to be quick and easy. You're going to love it. So I am super excited about this video today because honestly, this is one of the most easiest things you can do if you have a Canon camera and want to grade C-Log3. It's really easy with DaVinci Resolve, but here's the thing. C-Log3 is in 10-bit and the free version of DaVinci Resolve does not allow you to do the 10-bit grading. You're gonna have to buy DaVinci Resolve at 295 for the studio edition. But guess what? It's totally worth it. Do it. I switched over about four months ago and I haven't looked back. I even canceled my prescription. Um, what am I on? Drugs? Subscription. I canceled my subscription to Premiere Pro and it, it felt good. It was like when I dumped Spectrum for AT&T Fiber. It was, it was that good. It felt awesome. If you're a Premiere user, well, $295 one time is totally worth it because you're spending that every year on Premiere Pro, which lets you down because it let me down. Let's jump into it right now. I'm gonna show you my screenshot and go over my grading here. It isn't very complicated, but maybe it will make you feel more confident to grade your C-Log3 in the future. Okay, we are in this old project of mine right here, and right now we are in the Edit tab. So we're gonna move over to Color tab, and what you'll see is what is called a node. So this is a node. You can add nodes by right-clicking, go to Add Node, then a corrector, and now you've got this. It's free, falling, it's not connected to anything, and all you have to do is just connect it like that, and then have it go to the output. So now, Think of it as a layer like you would in uh, Premiere Pro or After Effects. So this is the layer. So first layer, second layer, you can keep adding nodes and going on. The benefit of a node is if you do a little bit of correction here, add another node, do a little bit of correction there. If you screw up one of these, you can just delete, but you can, we'll delete this right here. You can do all your editing right on here but then it's kind of stuck on there and everything you do then trickles down and it won't be as good so you can reset it so i will show you kind of both ways so if we were to do this right away this is c log 3 and this is from the r6 mark 2. so what you'll want to do first thing you do we're going to do it just on this one node i'm going to show you what it looks like first we're gonna take the color space transform. You're just gonna drag it right there. So the input color space is the Canon Cinema Gamut. Then input gamma is going to be C-Log3 right here. And just look at that right away. This looks pretty darn good. Um, before, after, that was as simple as that. And then you're looking at your scopes right here and they just spread out. So that's what it originally looked like with the scopes and just adding that cinema gamut, LUT automatically does that. This looks pretty good. Honestly, if you were just to export it as is, that's not bad. People won't notice a difference, but there's a lot more leverage that you could do with this. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, in this tab here, go to your curves. When it comes to curves, you start in the middle and then you work your way out. So in curves, think of this as your mid-tones. And as I'm moving it up and down, you can look at my scopes to the right. That's what we're going to want to look. So the mid, you probably want to keep it maybe around that 640 mark. And then the bottom is going to be the shadows. So we've got shadow. If I bring it down, it's going to crush the shadows and get a little black. And so let's look at the scopes right there. Okay. And then this is going to be the highlights. So you raise it up. So on the far right, it's going to be the highlights. Maybe to that 896 right there. And then it's nice and bright. So let's just look at it. 
not bad at all. Now, the reason you would want to add nodes is let's say I have a node that's specifically just doing the S curve. Then I can see what it looks like just with the S curve, or I have one that's just specifically color or adding the cinema gamut. And then you can kind of do it layer by layer and really figure out what your colors look like and have more control instead of shoving it all on this one node. Um, but we're going to do it this way. And then I'm going to show you how to do it the other way real quick as well. So after you've done this, scopes look pretty good. Again, look how crushed they are here. And then we're expanding it to give it more dynamic range, more leverage. Now, obviously, when you do real estate photography and video, um, you really have to pick where you want to focus. And we want to focus the inside. So we're okay crushing the windows. It's okay if they get a little blown out. It's just part of the look. So now we're looking at this, another way to tweak it after you've done the S curves, they're called S curves. So it kind of does give a little S look and some of them are more drastic than others. So I mean, I could, that looks more S like, right? But I'm crushing the, the darks a little more than I would like to, but let's just keep it down there because then you can go over here to shadows and then just up that shadow a little bit. So you can tweak it here. Uh, we can go to highlights. I can bring the highlights down a little more and then we can bring in some more contrast uh, right there. If you wanted to, to get a little sharper and with the R6 Mark II, you really don't have to, but we could bring it up a couple here. It just gives it a little bit more sharpness. Um, on the opposite, you can actually dull it a little bit. That would give it more of a cinema look. Um, I don't mind it a little sharp, so we'll do that. Uh, we got the temperature there. You could grab this little dot and let's just see it didn't change too much. That's actually pretty good. So the white balance that I had on here isn't bad at all. Um, again, after, and this is before, and all of this was pretty quick, pretty easy to do. Um, the other thing you can do is you go into this log tab right here and you can change the colors of the shadow, the midtones, the highlights, the offset, and give it more of a, you know, a look. So in this case, I'm in the shadow and let's, uh, let's bring it to this teal. Look at that. It's kind of got that vintage look now, uh, right here. Now, this is where you would want to create a different node and put that in there because then you would connect it to that and that would be specific to using these midtones because then you can turn this off, turn it on, figure out if that's really the look you wanna do. Otherwise, I just put it all in here and now if I wanna fix this, I have to reset everything or I have to manually go back. And that's why creating nodes or if you're coming from Premiere, just call them a layer, but a node is like a layer. Um, is really the way to go with that. But I kind of like this look already. Um, this was one I graded already. Um, so if I were to kind of play it out, this is what it looks like. And then if you liked the look and you're staying in the same room, then just go back over to edit and click on the one that is edited the clip, do control C, and then you'll go back to the clips that aren't graded do alt V and that's the only thing you'll want to check is that color correction. So we'll hit apply and now it is that same look. Um, it's pretty vintage kind of dramatic looking shot. So this is kind of what it looks like. Not bad. So really that's it, but let's do a total reset of that color grading. So we'll reset the node. This is where it is. Let's go add um, a corrector node, green to green, green out. And right away you can do another one. So we'll just add another node and you'll just wanna make sure you can keep these uh, organized. Here's the original. Then let's just add the color transform on here and we will add on the Canon Cinema Gamut Go back to C log three. Then again, look at that did so much. So if you just leave this as using that LUT, then we could just go over here and then start using this one to do some of the simple, you know, color fixes here. So 
Uh, we'll do some exposure fixing like we did before. Bring that down, crush it a little bit. Bring the highlights up a tad. And even, you know, come over to start here. And I will kind of bring shadows up a little bit and highlights down. Again, you're going to want to focus and look at the scopes. I'm just going really fast. So um, this will give you an idea. You can up the saturation a little bit and the contrast. Now, if that's kind of giving you where you're at, we can start working on color. So we're going to want to add another node that's going to be specific to color. Okay, so we can look at the lift right here and now we can change that up a little bit, give it that cooler look. Um, you've got your gamma, so we can play around with that too. And here's the gain, um, you know, if we need to up it at all. Uh, I'm just going to reset that right here with the reset button. Um, we can do a little bit of details here. And then this is the offset, so you can kind of tweak tweak that look so now each of these kind of serves a specific purpose canon cinema gamut and the canon log 3 on this one and then right here we are making more of that exposure correction and here is the color that's how i've been doing it there might be some easier routes but really color grading when it comes to davinci resolve is really easy and I highly recommend it. The downside is you cannot do the free version when it comes to Canon C-Log3 because it's in 10-bit and you can't grade 10-bit video in the free version. You're gonna have to pay the $295, but then once you pay it, you own it for life and it gives you so much more leverage than Premiere Pro does. So I would highly recommend doing it. Let me know if that seemed complicated or if that seemed easy in the comments below. For me, it's super simple and I'm not a color grader. I am not a color grader, but boy, I feel like one. I feel pretty, pretty cool and sophisticated when I'm in DaVinci Resolve. I can see my scopes easy. I can do each thing. And the nice thing about it, I'm gonna tell you, is the different little tabs that you can connect and use and you don't feel like in Lumetri, it's all chaotic. Here, it, it has organization. There is a purpose to it all. And I love that because I need to be organized when I'm doing my edits. And I love that about DaVinci Resolve. If you want to see more videos just like this one with DaVinci Resolve, well then please subscribe and stick around because there's going to be a lot more videos on this and with the Canon R6 Mark II because I'm discovering something new every day when I'm using that camera. And the final review of the Canon R6 Mark II is gonna be coming out shortly, and that is really more in depth with my experience as a professional photographer and videographer. And is it right for you? Well, it depends. It depends if you are, no, it, it is, it's right for everybody. Everybody should have the Canon R6 Mark II. I'm a Canon fanboy, can you tell? Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video, but meanwhile, Check out the other videos that are popping up right now. I'm sure the algorithm already learned you. There's no denying it. And it's best that you just cave in and choose one of those videos. Sooner than later. We'll see you soon.